Hello and welcome to Ageless Rock, a channel for megalithic fans with megalithic lens. Today, we are going to check out a temple on the far end of Cambodia. It is near the border close to Thailand. It is in the more tranquil province of Ban Thie Mien Che. The province itself means Fortress of Victory. This temple is believed to have been built by Jayavarman VII. That means this temple is about 1000 years old. This temple is on par with any big moat temples in Angkor city in Simrit province. But in reality, only about 2000 foreign tourists made it to this site every year. From an aerial view, it looks clear that there is a moat temple and a beret with the mabon. But this is not the original size of the moat temple. The moat is much bigger than that. The condition is in such a ruin that it is barely visible if you fly over this site at 13,000 feet. The actual moat temple is a rectangular structure measuring 1.9 km long and 1.7 km wide. This temple required a vast total land area of 3.2 million square meters of land. This is an incredibly ambitious temple project if you live about 1000 years ago. It is very hard to see how wide the moat is. But if the outline on the northwest is a guide, it should be about 50 meters wide. The perimeter is an impressive 7.2 kilometers long. This moat would have created a water surface of about 350,000 square meters. In fact, ancient Cambodians here made a moat temple larger than Angkor Wat. I can't help but to wonder what is the level of devotion needed to make these extra-large temples that even with modern technology and manpower today, we are not even making one that can come close to ancient achievements. The mode inside the outer mode is the one obvious and visible from an aerial view. It measures 890 meters long by 820 meters wide. At about 730,000 square meters, the inside moat alone stands among the large moat temples in Cambodia such as Priyakan Temple and Beng Malie Temples. The land inside the moat is 760 meters long by 690 meters wide. This is an impressive 524,400 square meters or 130 acres of land cleared and maintained for worship. With these simple measurements from Google Earth, you can roughly estimate that 205,600 square meters of land was not only cleared but dug a few meters deep so that it can contain water to call moat. This is an astounding achievement if hoes and baskets are all you need. But this is not all. The big moat is what everyone is talking about. Hardly anyone talks about the inner moat. It is much smaller but at about 300 meters long by 200 meters wide. It is still a marvelous achievement in ancient times. Within the moat, there is a large laterite wall where it contains the sanctuary. If you look at the entire structure from the center moat alone, it feels like this is straight out of a fantasy land. Let's take a look at the outermost moat. It is so dried and well used by villagers that it is hard to see from satellite view. At ground level, it is also very hard to see. Only a few areas have a moat that looks like a pond. The mode that gets the most attention is the middle mode. Even on dry season, it is still visibly and unmistakably a mode. From Google Earth, you can see that you can swim about 50 meters directly across from any point. 
The southern side has a causeway with the famous Naga Balustrade where the gods are on one side and the demons on the other side pulling the seven-headed Nagas. Sadly, all the heads are gone. This is a stark reminder that human needs for possession is the most destructive force at megalithic sites. On the eastern mode, you can see the immensity of the project. This eastern mode view from the center to the north end is only one eighth of the entire length of the middle mode. You can only imagine how many people worked here to get the job done. If Bantie Chemar is fully excavated and restored to half its former glorious days, it will be a key destination just like Angkor Wat. But the villagers here are happy with where they are now. Rustic and isolated scenery is going to stay for a while. If you plan to visit Bantie Chemar, check the full moon date in November. The Cambodians celebrate a very important day known as Bon Om Tu or Water Festival. This annual event makes the sleepy town comes to life like a busy city. The sanctuary itself is an amazing masterpiece. It is 250 meters long by 200 meters wide. It has four gopuras on all cardinal points. There are two cruciform structures one on the north while the other on the south. There are also two smaller structures which we call libraries. They are also arranged in north and south each. In the late 19th century, the French were already snooping around Bantier Chemar. In 1911, a French explorer by the name Etienne Emonier visited this temple. Bantier Chemar Temple was reclaimed by nature at that time. It was hard to even imagine what the entire temple looked like. It wasn't until 1924 the first archaeological survey was conducted by George Grosslier. It took another 10 years to continue surveying in 1934. But this site is extremely vast and resources to deal with the huge vegetation overgrowth were limited. Clearing the temple went on all the way to the 60s. With so much done, there is actually a lot more to do than you think. It is still heavily covered with tropical plants. There is a lot of landmines due to Khmer Rouge war back in the 1970s. In 2014, it was declared safe for tourists. This temple received a fraction of the annual tourists in Cambodia. Trees are allowed to grow to provide shades and to keep the haunting beauty alive as a reminder that nature has all the time in the world to slowly rip it apart if humans decided to abandon it. All the reading materials you can find say that Ancient Cambodians built this vast temple because they were already here. But common sense and my megalithic lens say that there is something wrong with this picture. Cambodians today are wood-based civilization and thatched roof is a common sight. An individual or village may regress, but a human civilization do not regress. No matter how you draw the layout, this temple is too vast in a location too isolated to have a huge population to make this happen. There is no evidence to suggest that the land here were heavily populated approximately 1,000 years ago. Bantie Chemar consists of a moat temple and a beret. It is a twin concept which I strongly believe there is a yin and yang connection for positive energy that benefits nature. These two structures stretch 3.6 kilometers from end to end, with two megalithic temples in between the west Gopura of the moat and the east of the beret. Bantie Chemar is not only enormous but also complex. 
you might have noticed it is not facing east perfectly in a straight line. It is actually tilted at an angle. To get a 3.6 km structure at an angle is an astronomical achievement with primitive tools. It is tilted at about 5 to 6 degree towards the north. We have no clue how it was done and why it was done that way. Everything puzzles the experts since it was rediscovered. Don't forget that the land is not 100% flat. The higher ground is on the southwest and when it rains, water flows toward the northeast. This is why you see water accumulates on one side of the beret and moat while the other side is dry. If this beret was dug as reservoir for agricultural land, there will be water outlets on the north and east side so that during the drought season, water can be drained for agricultural purposes. Bantia Chamar would have been producing crops all year round and there will be no reason to abandon this ancient city to the point of lost civilization. When you see from an aerial view of a LiDAR scan, Bantie Chamar Temple is definitely something out of the ordinary. It reminds me of a computer chipboard. There are too many water tanks within the inner mode. There is even a water tank in a water tank in the northeast quadrant. What a weird thing to do if you have a water tank you cannot access. As a simple conclusion, I just find that this simple design is simply too advanced for a civilization, too small in population and too primitive to be of any use other than worshipping. There is no reason too big to abandon and no reason we have no clue what happened here. Well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this short presentation on Bantie Chumar Temple. See you in the next video and have a wonderful day. Lay high.